Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team video where today I'm reviewing the Blooded Kill Team from Kill Team Morok. Before we get into things, thanks goes to Games Workshop for providing this to review for free. But as always, I aim to be honest, impartial and constructively critical. And please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of this Kill Team and the video as a whole. Let me know what you like and what you don't like. And also, I've got a Discord you can check out for free in the episode description, as well as a Patreon if you'd like to give me some more support. But yeah, for today, I'm going over the Blooded Kill Team, which are the Traitor Guardsmen in Kill Team Morok. For the narrative, this Kill Team are basically Traitor Guardsmen. They are Guardsmen who are originally loyal to the Emperor and then turn to chaos, either through just pure corruption or becoming bloodthirsty warriors based on what they've seen and done, or those disillusioned with service for serving so long and seeing no hope or end result that is actually good for what they're doing, so have just abandoned themselves to chaos. Or even regiments who have turned on their leaders, and also leaders who have corrupted their regiments. So there's a wide mix of people who fall under this subgroup. Now, they don't actually work as an organized team. Instead, they are basically... It's like a pyramid scheme, effectively. The, those in power tell those in power to, who command a group to go there and do stuff. Usually pillage, uh, ransack like key points and take them over. So, for example, you'll have a blooded leader who through sheer willpower and violence controls a blooded kill team, who then answers to a more senior chaos operative, either be a larger chaos imperial commander, or even chaos space marines themselves. And while they do work as a group, they are now more individualistic, working basically for themselves to cause as much chaos and carnage as they can in the name of the dark gods to be rewarded for these vile acts that they do. But with the narrative out of the way, I'll go over the kill team itself. So these are just Chaos Guardsmen. They're like Traitor Guards, effectively, like Vet Guards if they were bad, or Vet Guard if they were good, depending on your standpoint. But I'll go through the Kill Team roster first. So for the archetype, you're locked into Seek and Destroy, which is rough. But you have a Blooded Traitor Chieftain, who can either have an Auto Pistol or Laz Pistol and Chainsword or Power Weapon, a Bolt Pistol and a Chainsword, a Bolt Gun and a Bayonet, or a Plasma Pistol and an Improvised Blade. So they've kind of tried to work around the issue they had with the Vet Guard, where it was kind of like, yeah, you always go with Plasma Pistol and Power Weapon. So now you kind of have to choose. If you want the Power Weapon, you have to go with an Auto Pistol or Laz Pistol. Bolt Pistol and Chainsword are the most balanced, whereas the Plasma Pistol and Improvised Weapon is my preferred option because of the Plasma Pistol. Then you have nine Blooded Operatives. So you have a Grenadier, a Butcher, a Comsman, a Corpsman, a Flenser, four Gunners, either with a Flamer, Grenade Launcher, Melter Gunner, Plasma Gunner, then a Sharpshooter, a Thug, a Trench Sweeper, and then your Trooper, which is your Warrior. Then you get four Blooded Operatives that are either the Traitor Enforcer, which counts as two, your Ogryn, which counts as two, or a single Traitor Trooper, so up to four of those. Other than your Troop Operatives, you can only include one of each. And interestingly, your Kill Team can only include two Gunners, so Vet Guard, watch out, you might not be able to take four much longer. Overall, it's a pretty large kill team. I'll, you'll see when we go into the data sheets, but generally, my general loadout would be the leader, nine operatives, two traitor troopers, and an ogren, because they really should have made the traitor enforcer one slot and the traitor ogren free. But because the ogren's always only two, it's worth better than two troopers, whereas the single enforcer isn't. But that's pretty it. It makes more sense when we look at everything else. Now we have their abilities of the Blooded Kill Team, which is Blooded. So first you have to keep a pool of blood, Blooded Tokens. You add a Blooded Token to your pool as follows at the start of each initiative phase. The first time an enemy operative is incapacitated in each turning point, and the first time a friendly operative is incapacitated within red of an enemy operative in each turning point. Once in each strategy phase, when it is your turn to use a strategic ploy or pass, you can assign any or all of your blooded tokens from your pool to friendly blooded operatives in the kill zone. Each operative can have no more than one blooded token. In each strategy phase, after assigning your blooded tokens, if you have any, 
If four or more friendly operatives in the kill zone have blooded tokens, you can select one of them to be under the gaze of the gods until the end of the turning point. Each time a friendly blooded operative that has a blooded token fights in combat makes a shooting attack. Before rolling your dice, you can retain one successful hit without rolling. If you are under the gaze of the dark gods, that operative can retain one successful critical hit instead. So effectively, instead of any kind of organization, you have the blooded ability. And you generally will start off with one. And it's a nice way to get guaranteed hits. And I like that it works before you roll, so it's more balanced. My main problem is far too hard to generate these quickly. So the problem you have is it replaces any kind of order support for this. And you're generally going to have two. It's really hard to actually get four by the start of your uh, turning point two. And the issue is, if an operative dies with a blooded token, it's gone unless you have a way to save it on operative nearby. So you can't you can't be like careless with these blooded tokens and stacking them is quite difficult. So you want to spread them out so someone gets uh, under the gaze. But even then, under the gaze isn't an amazing thing. You just go from a guaranteed hit to a guaranteed crit. A guaranteed hit is nice. It's just very convoluted because now you have to keep track or a track of your blooded tokens in your pool. Then you have to keep track of who has been allocated them and you have to keep a track of each time you score it off. So there's just a lot of things to bookkeep. And it reminds me something from Warhammer Underworld, which I didn't like, which is lots of token management, which is not not good in my opinion. So for their tack ops, you have Worthy Champion, which is faction tack op one. Reveal this in any step of a, any target real step. If a friendly bullet operative that is under the gaze of the gods incapacitates one or more any operatives during that turning point and is within red of the center of the kill zone or your opponent's drop zone, you score one VP. And if you do it again, you score another VP. So the issue is you're going to be maybe scoring this first from turning point two, maybe from turning point three and onwards, it's just more unreliable. So I wouldn't really take it. <laughs> then you have malign command. You reveal this target in any reveal step. At the end of the turning point, if friendly blooded operatives control half or more of the objective markers and each of those objective markers is controlled by one or more friendly blooded operatives that have a blooded token, you score one VP. And if you do it again, you score another VP. So the problem with this is you have to hold more, which is fine, but then you need to have blooded operatives with blood tokens on them to score more, which is really tough if you're playing six objective missions or five. So you kind of, it's a really late game, uh, it's a late game tack op, which is also really, really hard to score. Now, if they just meant you just needed one with a blooded token holding it, that's fine while you hold more. But at the moment, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's just really tough. Then you have Bloodbath, which is faction tack up free. You score this at the end of the battle. If more than half of the enemy kill team has been incapacitated, you get one VP. If more than three quarters of the enemy kill team has been incapacitated, you score an additional VP. So it's it's actually the best one out of all three. The main problem is it's quite easy to get one for, point from. But from two, just because of how it works, if they have a 14 operative kill team, you need to kill 11. If they have 10, you need to kill eight or more. So you generally have to go for wiping out, which supports how they play and is probably their best faction tack op. It is just their tack ops are not good. Like maybe if blooded, if it was like you only needed three to get under the gaze of the gods, then I'd probably think worthy champion and malign command wouldn't be too bad, but probably you're probably just picking blood bath. Everything else is just not good. So for the strategic ploys, we have overcharged las guns. Uh, so your las guns get AP one and the hot special rules. So just for las guns, accept your long lasers. Glory kill. Select one visible friendly blooded operative until the end of the turning point. Each time you fight in combat or make a shooting attack, in the roll attack dice of that combat or shooting attack, you can reroll one of your attack dice. So you basically go pick one enemy operative and go. I'm going to get one reroll against all of them. Uh, well, your whole kill team gets one reroll against them. It's fine. It's not bad. It's pretty good for killing key targets, so pretty decent. Then you've got Reckless Aspirants. In the next firefight phase, 
While a friendly blooded operative that does not have a blooded token is within red of your opponent's drop zone, treat it as if it had a blooded token. So that's actually pretty good and helps probably your most important strategic ploy. So very important that. So dirty fighters, until the end of the turning point, each time a friendly blooded operative fights in combat, if another friendly operative is supporting them, you can retain one of your successful normal hits as a crit hit instead. So it's okay if you're swarming stuff, but it's not amazing. It's okay. But tactical ploys, you get callous disregard. So use this when shooting a friendly blooded operative. For that shooting attack, having other friendly operatives within engagement range of the operative does not prevent you shooting them. When determining line of sight, um, enemy operatives cannot use friendly bases as cover. In the roll attack die step of that shooting attack, failed hits are instead retained separately as successful normal hits. In the resolve successful hits of that shooting attack, those retained hits inflict damage upon one friendly operative within engagement range of the target operative. So it's effectively shoot into combat. If you miss, you hit your own operatives. So it's pretty funny and thematic. You have moment of rapture. When a friendly blooded operative that is under the gaze of the gods is activated, add one to its APL. For once, I mean, for one CP, it's not great. Uh, I should get a lot more for that. Then reward earned. Use this tactical ploy when an enemy operative is incapacitated by a friendly top operative within blue. Add one blooded token to your pool. That's actually pretty useful. You don't have to kill in melee if you move within blue and point blank them. Very good. So that's probably a best tactical ploy. Then you've got dark favor. Use this when a friendly operative that has a blooded token is selected as a target for shooting attack. Select one other friendly blooded operative that doesn't have a blooded, to blooded token is within blue and is visible to the active operative. Resolve that shooting attack against the other friendly operative instead. So it's like, I have a blooded token, you can shoot my mook instead. It's okay. If, if you've made a mistake, it's a nice way to go, haha, my key operative isn't dead. So it does help you keep blooded token operative safe. So now I'll go over the operatives found within the blooded kill team. So first you have the traitor brimstone grenadier. He was probably the best operative here. So it's standard movement free, uh, free white, two APO, GA1, free defense, five up save, wound seven. Lasgon is fours, four attacks, hit on fours, two free. Bayonet is three attacks, hit on fours, two free. Then it's got a diabolic bomb, which is four attacks, hit on threes, free free. Range red, blast white, indirect, limited, splash two. So Grenadier, it's equipped with frag and crack grenades, and they don't cost any equipment points, so he gives you your fourth crack grenades. Cough, cough. Explosive de Demise. If this operative is incapacitated, you can use this ability. If you do so, roll a D6, D6 subtracting one. If this operative is within engagement range of an enemy operative, on a free up, each operative visible and within white of this operative suffers D3 mortal wounds. So your, your opponent actually wants to kill this guy in melee because if they move up within two like he's concealed and then shoot him on a free up they're gonna take d3 more wounds but you mainly take him because he comes with an extra crack grenade so and the diabolic bomb is a better frag grenade so pretty neat then you have the traitor butcher who is your melee guy he's got eight wounds power weapon and cleaver which is four attacks freeze for floor slash six with lethal five up and blood offering Unholy sustenance, each time this operative fights in combat, if it incapacitates an enemy operative, gains D3 mortal wound, uh, gains D3 lost wounds. Blood offering, each time it fights in combat with this weapon in the re uh, resolve hits, the first time you strike with the critical hit, add one blooded token to your pool. Always take this guy, very, very useful. Great way to recycle uh, blooded tokens, and he's just actually really good in combat. Then you've got your commsman who has signal. It's like one friendly blooded operative visible and within red. Add one to its APL. You cannot perform this while in with engagement range. Then you've got sacrilegious. Then you've got sacrilegious actuation. For one AP, you can select one friendly blooded operative visible within red. Remove its blooded token and add it to your pool. It cannot be a token that blooded operative if it's only treated as having. So you can't remove imaginary ones. Then you select one friendly operative that does not have a blooded token and visible and within red and assign your blooded token from your pool. You cannot perform this action while within an engagement range and you cannot uh, or if you cannot assign a blooded token. So you can't pull one back into your pool, but what you can do is basically go, I've activated this operative, now it's in the open, it hasn't died yet, so I'm going to pull the blooded token from it and put on someone else. So it's a way to save blooded tokens. Then you've got your corpseman, which is your medic. So it's got a stim needle, which is five attacks, 
But free attack scene on fives, one slash four, with lethal five up. So it's got regular dosage. At the end of a select kill team step of the mission sequence, if you have selected this operative for deployment, you can select one friendly blooded operative to gain a stim effect. Then you've got the stim action. You select one friendly operative visible and within black, select one of the stim effects opposite. You can only select each stim effect for each operative once per battle. And you cannot perform this while within engagement range. You can either heal them for 2d3 until the end of the battle, it gains relentless on melee weapons. Until the end of the battle, it gains a six up feel no pain. So effectively, what you do is when you take the Ogryn, you give him a six up feel no pain. And then on your first activation, you give him relentless. And then you can give, you start just giving up six up, six up feel no pain to people because relentless isn't too important for you. But it's really, really good. And you always take the corpsman. Great. Then you've got the Enforcer, which is a bit of a disappointment. Four up saves with eight wounds. It's got a bolt pistol, four attacks, freeze, three slash four, range red. Power fist, four attacks, hit on fours, five slash seven, brutal. So it's got grueling disciplinarian. While a friendly blooded operative is visible and within blue, is not treated as being injured, but you only ignore the modifier to its movement. So it's a, ni it's a nice way to go, yo, you're going to move. Then he's got Enforcer for one AP. Select a friendly operative that is not ready and is visible within blue. Then you select one of the following. They can perform a free dash action. If the operative is an engage order, it can perform an overwatch action. You cannot perform this while with engagement range. So the neat thing is you can go, my plasma gun is going to shoot you. Next activation, activate him. Now he's going to overwatch you. It's pretty neat. If he was free APL, I would probably always take him. But the fact he's only two means I would just take the two traitor guardsmen instead. He is... It's not worth it losing two bodies for just giving someone a guaranteed overwatch. And the power fist is just okay. Then you've got the traitor flenzer. So he's got skinning blade, which are four attacks hitting on freeze, three slash four with ceaseless and stalk. Stalk. So each time this operative fights in combat and is within white of light or heavy terrain, this weapon gains the lethal five up special rule. And then he's got wretched. This operative can perform a charge action while as a conceal order. If, if this operative is incapacitated in combat, if you have any remaining attack dice, you can strike with one attack dice before this operative is removed from the kill zone. So let's say your opponent hits you with four dice and you've got four dice, yeah? They know they have to, like, even, they can't parry out, so they have to kill you as quickly as possible. But let's say they roll four hits, you roll four hits. They're just going to go hit, you crit them back, hit, and then you will have two free leftover dice, so you hit them anyway. And the great thing, he's great at just threatening stuff. So you probably throw him into stuff he can't kill, or just wounded stuff, because he can charge from conceal, and then he has lethal five up. It's pretty decent. Then you've got your gunner, who can either have a flamer, grenade launcher, melter gun, or plasma gun. You probably go with the plasma gun and grenade launcher. If you're against, like, elite kill teams, you'll go with plasma gun and melter gun, but just your standard gunner. Then you've got your traitor Ogryn, who is free white, 2 APL, GA1, free defense, 5 up save, with 16 wounds. He's got a power maul and mutant claw, which is 4 attacks, hitting on threes, 5, 6 with rending and stun. Avalanche of muscle. After it finishes a charge action, select one enemy operative with engagement range. It suffers D3 mortal wounds. Because it's chem enhanced, you can ignore any and all modifiers as operative's APL, and it's not affected by stun. And then Brute, this operative cannot perform mission actions or the pickup actions, and unless otherwise specified, it cannot be given with equipment. And you always take this, because two guardsmen are two bodies, that's true, but they are only 14 wounds, and this guy with 16 wounds, 6 up feel no pain, and then like, relentless, is just going to murder stuff. So you always take the Ogren, always, so good. Then you've got the Sharpshooter, who has the Sharpshooter's Long Laz, which is four attacks, hitting on threes, three free, silent, mortal wounds, one, and then a bayonet. So the Camo Cloak, each time a shooting attack is made against this operative, if you're in cover, you retain one additional dice. The only problem is, you're always firing silent, so technically you should never be shot. It's fine. I'm odd it's mortal wound one. I think it was because they realized mortal wound three on the Imperial Guard Sniper for Veteran Guard was too good. But it's not bad, it's just the camo cloak is oddly useless. Then you've got the Traitor Thug. Heavy Club, which is four attacks, freeze, four, four, brutal. Then he's got Tough. Each time he fights in combat or shooting attack is made against it, select one from the normal damage uh, for weapons that or shooting attacks to a minimum of one. So he's actually oddly tough. Uh, and he has a four up save. Not bad, but take if you like.
Then you've got the Trench Sweeper, has a 4-up save as well. Has a Shotgun, which is 4 attacks, hitting on 2 is 3, 3, range red. Then a Bayonet and Shield, which has the Shield keyword. Each time this operative fights in combat with this weapon, in the Resolve successful hit set of that combat, you parry 2 hits instead of 1. You have Shielding. Each time this operative is activated, you can use this ability. If you do so, each time a shooting attack is made against this operative, you can reroll your defense, any or all of your defense dice and subtract white from this operative's movement. It's fine. The only thing is I would have preferred it if the shield gave you a free up save or something like that, or you count as being in cover on, on top of all of that. Loot make going down to four movement, four inch movement is pretty rough, but I think I'd always take this. It's nice point blank clearance. Then you've got your standard traitor trooper, GA2, just a Laz Garden, just standard really. Then you've got your traitor chieftain who has eight wounds. As I said, the key thing is you give the Plasma Pistol an Improvised Blade, even though the Improvised Blade is 4 attacks, 3 is 2 free. That Plasma Pistol is just too good to pass up. You could go with the Auto Pistol or Laz Pistol and Power Weapon, but Power Weapon only hits on freeze, whereas the Plasma Pistol is just better. You've got Blooded Icon, so once per turning point, when a friendly Blooded Operative with a Blooded Token is incapacitated within red of this Operative, you can add that Blooded Token to your pool. You, no effect if they're only treated as having blooded tokens. And then lead with strength. Each time this operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack, if he has a blooded token and is more than red from your drop zone, treat it as if it's under the gaze of the gods. It's not, it's not bad. It's it's fine. Like, generally you're just going to go pop out with the plasma pistol. Not bad, it's just okay. Then you have your equipment. It's You've got a frag grenade, crank grenade, armor plates for 2 EP, so each time a shooting attack is made against this operative, you can reroll any or all of your defense rolls of one. Chem Breather for one, you can ignore any or all APL modifiers and it's not affected by stun, which is actually pretty useful. Sinister's Trophy, which you can only take one of and it's free EP. While an enemy operative is activated with an engagement range, subtract one from their melee weapons. It's a shame it's not a blue inch bubble. Probably wouldn't take it. It's a shame you can't give it to the Ogryn. Incendiary Shells for the Trench Sweeper. You gain the Blast Black to your shotgun, but you subtract one from the normal damage. So it goes from free free to two free. It's okay. Then you've got the blood beast pelt. So each time a shooting attack is made against this operative, if it's the blast or turret special rule, you can reroll one of your defense dice and you're not affected and it's unaffected by splash. It's okay. Then wicked blades are one slash two EP. You add one to your normal damage characteristic. If it's on the shield, it's two EP. Otherwise it's one. Equipment's pretty bland. You're generally just going to take free crack grenades because then you've got four crack grenades and put the chem breather on like your leader or something. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing equipment. Then you've got all your standard narrative stuff, which you find with all kill teams, which gives you nice thematic stuff for your spec up campaigns and general narrative play. So overall, the blooded kill team is actually pretty decent. It is rough that your tac ops aren't good and you're locked into seek and destroy, but they in my opinion, do quite well as just a rushdown team. They're not as fast as Vet Guards. I would have loved it if they had like a once per game free dash, but they're good. I mean, the main thing you go is you go, I've got four crack grenades, I've got an Ogryn, and I've got a plasma gun, probably a crack grenade or melt a uh, grenade launcher or melter gun, and you just rush forward to your opponent. You've even got your nice melee guys. Like you, your goal is literally just run into the opponent and cut them down. It's quite simplistic, but it's that fast way to play a hordy kill team. It is a shame they're relying on my, in my opinion, on exploiting crack grenades, but that's more of a problem with the grenade, the game as a whole. And <sighs> blooded tokens are fine. It's just so convoluted. I wish there was an easier way they could have been implemented as well as gaining them. It just feels really slow. You're kind of just using your CP to gain more blooded tokens and, you know, it's really strange to just go away when they die unless you're, like, saving them. It, ju it just means a kill team that should be very easy to play where you rush forward. You're going to have to be very careful with the blood token management and you may end up just not using it because, as I said, it's just an automatic hit. But main thing is, like, yeah, you stem up the Ogryn and then you rush forward with the Ogryn, four crack grenades and two gunners and just have a... You all like murder elite kill teams, but you may struggle against kill teams that match you or close to your number. I still I still think it's a fairly good kill team, just a bit limited by tac op selection and uh, 
in general, even faction tech ops, just play to wipe out the opponent every game. And you probably like hardcore aggression is actually really tough for a lot of people to deal with because a lot of people don't play that way. So it may actually be pretty good. I still think the kill team's strong. I don't like how they play because it just feels weird. Because I like at the moment like they restrict grenades in any way, I feel the kill team might lose a lot of power. But it's still fun. It it just I wish it had more synergy, like the blood pact instead of just four. We're just chaos guys. We're just gonna run at you. Um, but that's pretty much it. Please remember to like and subscribe as comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this review and the blooded kill team as a whole. Are you happy for them? You're not too obsessed, or do you think they're great? Just let me know. But yeah, I highly recommend buying this from Kill Team Morok. You know, if it's the Kill Team or the box itself. If you want to buy it, you can buy it from Games Workshop directly, or you can check out my affiliate link in the episode description below, which will net you a 15 to 25 percent discount from Element Games at no additional costs while helping to support myself and the channel. So check it out if you'd like to. And as always, I have a Discord if you want to check out in the episode description below. I'll have an article that hopefully should be done and down in the episode description below. And I have a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. But I'll just shout out my Patreons. So for my adepts of the crit, I have Christopher, Kenzie, Tarun, Michael, and Theodore. And then for my veterans of the crit, I have Samja and Confucius. So thanks for the support. It really helps so much with myself on the channel, and I really appreciate it. So thank you. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this Kill Team review. I think the Blooded are pretty neat. It's it's fun rush down. It's kind of like maybe Commando players will really love this because you just rush forward. They do feel a little bit... It feels like um, that's why the, they have Blooded tokens, to give them some strategy. It's fine. Like, it's not bad. It's just a little bit boring for me but I still think they're quite strong. But I'd be interested to see how you think they work. But that's pretty much it for me. I'll have a bat rep on them soon, and I'll, I also have a video on the Phobos strike team, if you want to check them out, as well as Morok kill team box as a whole. But until next time, remember, even if you're being hounded upon by a horde of slavering Chaos Guardmen, remember, you always have a chance to survive even if they have blooded tokens, as long as you can roll a crit.